everybody, it's Dr. Dan again. I have one more video for y'all um, that shows you how to make bar charts in Excel. And so the previous video, I showed you how to make this very simple bar chart, which is three data points. This time I wanna show you how to make bar charts if your data is maybe a little bit more complex. And so let's say we have um, some data where we're looking at cytotoxicity for different cell lines. And so we might put our different cell line types. So maybe we have three T3 cells. Maybe another cell line you might have is Huvex. Um, and then maybe, sure, we'll just go HeLa cells. And let's say you're subjecting these cell lines to three different treatments. So we're going treatment A. And treatment B and treatment C. Okay, I'm going to make these columns a little wider. Okay, let's just say you have some data. I don't know what the data might be. You know, I'm just going to put some, some numbers in here. Okay, so this is all the data we want to put in bar charts. And obviously, we want to group these things together. So to do this, we're going to first select all of these together. And I can go to Insert, uh, the bar chart type. So we're not going to choose this one where they're stacked on top of each other. We're going to use this column one. And you can see it's grouping them by treatment together. And so it does this um, because it thinks it want, you want to compare um, like, like this across the row. If instead you wanted to group cell lines together, you would have to do a transpose of the chart. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So you can see on this chart, it's grouping the treatments together and then making a different color for each cell line. But if you wanted to do the opposite, I can copy this and I can go ahead and paste it down here smart paste, you can uh, transpose the paste. And so now it just transpose that whole, all that data really easily. And now we can insert a chart. Okay, and so this time it's putting all the cell lines together. And so it really depends how you want to compare things. But if you want to compare with cell lines, I'll just select this for now. Um, this is how we can group it together. Okay, so some of the things, I'm not gonna show you all the like optimization, how to look pretty, but some of the things I did wanna point out, it makes a nice legend for you where it keeps the colors across all the same. It does put in these. Again, you're gonna increase font size on all these things. You know, I don't like these. I'm not gonna go ahead and do the font size. Uh, the other thing we might look not like is maybe the gap, right? So this is where we can go back into our, we look at our series. Okay, this is where the series overlap comes into play. Again, the gap over width is this big gap between these. I think that is pretty large, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna reduce that down to 100%. Um, but we probably also wanna really reduce the series overlap for most cases. So if I put a zero in there, you can see now it makes the bars touching each other. And that may be something you want, maybe not something you want. If you put in a positive number, like if I put in 20, it actually makes them overlap, which we certainly don't want. If you put in a negative number, like negative 10, it gives you a little gap. So it really depends on what you like. Uh, I'll go ahead and put just a little gap just so it gives us a little bit of clarity and separation. The other thing we want to do is add error bars. And so error bars are a little bit different. We have to do it one series at a time. Okay, and so let's say that these are average values. So if we want to do standard deviations for all these, right, we're going to have to go ahead and put in standard deviations. So again, I'm going to copy the titles, which don't really matter, but just to be clear. So I'll make sure that we know what is what. Okay, and so I'm, again, I'll make up some numbers because I don't know what they would be, or I don't even know what this is. And now we can go ahead and put some uh, standard deviation values in here uh, with error bars. So again, we'll select a series just like we did before. Go to the chart tools, add chart element, error bars. Again, we just have to choose more error bar options. And you can see it's just doing it on the blue. So just on the treatment A, right, for each of these. And so we're going to want to choose custom. Okay, specify the value. And so we're looking at standard deviation of treatment A 
for the three different cell types. So our positive error bars is going to be here, right? That is treatment A for the three different cell types. And the negative error bars are going to be the exact same because we're doing a normal distribution. So we hit OK. And can you, you can see it added error bars. We might just double check. Yes, you know, Huvex and treatment A, 0.2, that looks about right, right? So we look good on that. And now to do the error bars on the next one, you have to select the next um, set of values, add chart element, error bars, make custom ones. Again, it's treatment B across. It puts in the error bars there. Okay, again, we, we just kind of look and make sure, yep, that 0.02 is really small, so I think we're good. And finally, the last ones we're going to add error bars for. And choose the correct values there. Okay. Again, so now we have added our error bars to all our chart. And again, you can make the charts look better by increasing font size, increasing thickness of error bars. And then you can change whatever you want to make it look good. Maybe move the legend around if you wanted to do that. Um, whatever you need to do to make the chart look good. But that's all uh, you need to know about Excel charting. There's a lot, you know, if you have a lot more data, it's basically the same process over and over again. But you're able to make it uh, bar charts using Excel um, so that you can get them ready for publication.